The shortest through the park is Sallallahu ala Muhammad. So try to make it a habit of reciting it, inshaAllah. Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islam brothers, inshaAllah, we're covering the topic regarding the veil, Islamic veil, inshaAllah. Today's um, topic would be about sitr of a man and a woman, inshaAllah. So just before I start uh, going through the questions and answers of this booklet, to give you a highlight on what's happening in our society, uh, we see a lot of uh, shops uh, ordering uh, a lot of clothing, but uh, some of the clothing that's been ordered from some parts of the country, like India, Pakistan, for females, uh, they labas, if you see, there's a see-through in the clothing as well. And these clothing are made for like hot countries and this country is not a hot country. So as I was speaking to a shop, I said, why are you ordering these kind of clothes? Because they're see-through. You know, and, and he said, look, there's some of the females, they will put a lining in between there which will cover it. So it's a lot of job to actually make a, a lining inside the clothing. So which is something to think about. And we should buy modest clothing for our women, inshallah. And be careful of buying such tight clothing that reveals the shape of a woman. And say for a man, if, uh, if he's doing any sports activities, he should try to wear something underneath that covers his knees as well, which is the sitter part of a male. And, uh, you know, we see a lot of footballers and you can see the knees and thighs are being exposed. Whether they're wrestling, boxing, and we're watching this on social media as well. And we have to refrain from our eyes seeing such parts, otherwise we'll be committing a sin. So here there is some questions that have been asked. What part of a man is included in his sitar and what are the relevant rulings for him in salah? So the answer is Sadr Sharia, Badu Tariqa, Alama, Maulana Mufti, Muhammad Amjad, Ali Azmi, Alayhi Rahmatullahi Al Qawi said a man's sitar aurat is from below his navel to below his knees i.e. covering this area of his body is fard, meaning it's obligatory. The navel is not included in the sitar, but the knees are. Nowadays, many people wear a tahband or pajamas in such a way that the part of the ab abdomen below the navel remains exposed. If they wear a shirt which covers this area and its skin is not exposed, then it is fine. Otherwise, haram. If a quarter of the area under the navel remains exposed due, during Salah, then Salah will be invalid. Some audacious people expose their knees and even thighs in front of other people. This is haram too. And anyone who is habitual of this is a fasik, meaning he's a sinner. Some Hajj pilgrims can be careless whilst wearing ihram and expose some parts of the sitr, such as the area under the navels and parts of the knees and thighs, they must repent and be sure to avoid such carelessness in the future. Likewise, people who roam around in shorts, exposing their entire knees and parts of their thighs must also learn from this and repent. They should neither become sinners nor invite others to commit the sin of unlawful gazing. If someone is wearing shorts, it is necessary for the other Muslim to refrain from looking at his uncovered knees or thighs. Like I've just mentioned, if, if you're uh, habitual in watching sports, yeah, football, there's a lot of footballers whose thighs and knees are exposed. And be careful of that. So moving on to the next part is the sitter of a woman. A question that's been asked. Please explain the ruling of a sitter for a woman and what areas of their bodies must be concealed in Salah. Bahari Shariat, Volume 1, Part 3, page 481, published by Maktabatul Madina, states, For a free woman, the era of slavery has ended. So nowadays, all women are free. And for a hermaphrodite, i.e. one who has both male and female physical features and can neither be declared to be a man nor a woman. The whole body is orat, area of concealing, excluding the face, palms and soles. The hair hanging 
from her head, her neck, wrists are also ordered and must be covered. It is obligatory to cover these parts. Some scholars have included soles and the back of the hands in the orat, i.e. something that must be covered. If a woman offers salah wearing a very thin scarf which reveals the blackness of her hair, then her salah will be invalid unless she covers it with something that conceals the color of her hair, etc. Another question. Is salah valid if only a small area of sitr is exposed? Sadr al-Shariya bad al-Tariqa alama Maulana Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi alayhi rahmatullahi al-Qawi <coughs> said, let it be clear that if less than a quarter of any body part which must be covered was exposed, then salah is valid. Even if a quarter is exposed, but instantly covered, then salah is still valid. If it remained exposed for the time period of one action, i.e. saying subhanallah thrice, or if it was exposed intentionally, even if covered instantly, then the salah will be invalid. <coughs> if a few area of sitr were partially exposed, such that each of the exposed areas less than a quarter of that limb, but collectively, the exposed area are equal to a quarter of the smallest of those exposed limbs, then salah is invalid. For example, if one ninth of a woman's ear or one ninth of her shin were exposed and collectively they definitely equal a quarter of the ear, hence her salah is invalid. Islamic sisters, what can be said about the blessings of Dawati Islami? This Sunnah inspiring environment has made hundreds of thousands of people who habitually missed Salah become punctual in Salah. He is a faith refreshing example. The following is summarized statement by an Islamic sister from Punjab, Pakistan. I already had a religious environment in my home as my father was a mu'izzin of a masjid. And my elder brother and sister were already affiliated with Dawud Islami. However, my mind was filled with worldly desires and my nafs was audaciously fond of sins. I had a habit of missing my salah. One day, some Islamic sisters came to my house in order to invite me to the sunnah inspiring ijtima of Dawud Islami. The affection and manner melted my heart and I made an intention to attend the ijtima. When I attended, I heard an Islamic sister delivering a heart tremble speech about the punishment of missing salah. That shook me up. I made a firm intention that inshallah azza wa jal, from this day on, I will not miss any single salah. Then with the arrival of Rabbi An-Nur, the session of blessings, I attended the Milad congregation where I heard an Islamic sister deliver a speech about the devastation of television. My hair stood on end and tears gushed from my eyes since that day onwards until the present day I have been busy striving to reform myself, remaining affiliated with Dawati Islami. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.